So you've installed the next witness, right? And the system has gone out and it's detected cameras on your network, right? Um, and you want to now set those cameras up. Uh, you want to name them. You want to set the recording schedule for them. You want to set up motion detection recording on them. You want to do a lot of different things. Um, basic stuff we're going to do right now is we're going to name the cameras so that they're easy to find. Um, and then we're going to apply recording schedules to them. So right now you can see I've got two cameras or five cameras that have been recognized actually, but two of them that are open and streaming, right? So if I go to the M10, M1014, uh, you can see it's a testing camera that's sitting in our rack somewhere. Not super useful um, and a wireless camera, so not really stable. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that one. But, but here we have another one, VBS30D, right? Um, taking a look at this camera, I can tell a couple things about it right away. Uh, number one, it's a 1080p camera. You can see the stream right here. It's, it's, it's got a max frame rate of 30 frames per second, and it's coming in right now at about 3 megabits per second in H.264 stream, in the high-res stream. Um, so let's go in and configure this camera. There's a couple different ways I can do it. Um, first thing I want to do is rename the camera, right? So I can either rename the camera by going to the camera settings dialog and choosing the camera name and renaming it here. Or I can just click on the camera in the uh, resource panel and I can rename it. Now I know from looking at this camera briefly, it's got a PTZ icon. That means it's PTZ enabled. So if I test out the PTZ function here, if I want to zoom into a particular part of the, the uh, office, I just go ahead and zoom in. So obviously it's working properly and it's a PTZ camera. So I'm going to name this one my PTZ camera in my office. Right? Um, when I open up and go to right to camera settings, I'm in, I'm in the general tab right now. So I can see the name PTZ, the model VB-S30D. Um, firmware is not reporting properly, in this one, so the OnVIF uh, on this particular camera isn't exactly standard. Um, that's normal though. A lot of OnVIF, OnVIF is a self-declared standard. Sometimes it works perfectly, sometimes it doesn't. Um, in this case, the firmware is not being reported. Um, but I do know the vendor is Canon, right? So I'm going to leave this as PTZ. Um, underneath uh, address here, I can see the IP address that it's sitting on right now. Um, and I can see the uh, web page address, which is you know, how you access that camera's web page. So see, I, I click that link, I launch right into the browser and go to the web page. Um, the other thing is the MAC address, which is useful sometimes for uh, you know support and that sort of thing. Um, I can also run a ping test just to, to make sure that the camera is up and the networking on it's fine and it, it looks pretty good right now. So authentication is important because it allows me to see the stream. Um, I need to be able to log in. It's the same. It's the same credentials you use when you log into the camera's web page. So in this instance, it's a, it's a root and something. And and most camera manufacturers, um, major ones, we already know the default login and password. If you've gone in and you configured your cameras using like an IP camera setup tool and you've changed this, uh, then you're gonna have to change this on our system as well. Um, so that's the authentication. Um, you can force the aspect ratio on a camera. If, for example, you want all your cameras in your system to be 16.9, then you could force all of them to be 16.9, and that'll force the camera to update to 16.9. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it as it is. The other thing is default rotation. If you install your camera upside down and you haven't set the camera settings in the actual camera to be a ceiling mount, uh, don't worry about it. We can do it for you. We can force it to rotate 180 degrees when you're pulling it out onto the, the viewing grid in NX Witness. Um, this is a fisheye lens camera. I'll show you that later um, in the fisheye lens demonstration. Uh, for right now, we're going to ignore that. The other thing is you can, you can enable audio on a camera. If you enable audio, you can record if the camera has a microphone and it will also capture audio in addition to video, right? So I've got the camera renamed. I understand everything I'm looking at here. Now I want to go to the recording setup, right? So for recording, I've got some different options. First thing I want to do if I want to record a camera is to enable the recording. Um, when I enable the recording, I have to have a recording license. Uh, that's our NX Witness Pro license. Um, and you can, tell, you can see the system tells you how many licenses you've used uh, out of your total that you have right now. Um, if you have a trial system, you're using a trial system, you get four, four licenses for 30 days. Um, if you need more, just contact us at support.networkoptic.com. We're very liberal with our licenses you guys can uh, use. We've, we've given out 300 licenses for you know 90 days. 
it really depends. If you're an integrator and you want to try and uh, convince a client to switch to the, to our software, hit us up at support, and we'll be happy to give you guys some licenses. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to go to the recording schedule. Uh, as soon as I enable recording, then I will get uh, the recording schedule enabled. So let me clear this off real fast. I can either drag it or I can click in the top left corner to apply to the entire schedule, right? So if I do that, um, basically I've got a 24 hour grid here and seven days a week. So if I want to apply recording during business hours, then I need to choose what type of recording I'm going to do and then drag it across the schedule, right? So for if I wanted to record this camera continuously, I would choose record always, right? Like I said, a lot of people out there like to make movies. Not really sure why it's a giant waste of uh, recording space and, and money really when it boils down to it because hard drives is what costs a lot in your video recording system. Um, personally, I like to do motion only recording or motion plus low res recording. Motion only will only record when there's significant motion and you can define the motion level that you want before something gets recorded. Um, motion plus low res records high resolution motion video plus the low resolution second stream all the time. And this is a great way to save space and capture everything just in case you, you miss something like, you know, like a ghost attack that, that, that everybody's always saying that they saw but they never captured on film, right? So if we wanna do motion plus low res, um, let's, let's, let's do this, let's mix it up. So between business hours, let's say nine to, nine to six, I wanna do continuous recording, right? And I wanna do it not on the weekends, let's, let's clear that out. So I've got continuous motion uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Really, until 7 p.m. in this one, right? 6 p.m., sorry, 6 p.m. Now, I wanna do motion plus low res every other part of the time. I just drag that across the schedule and apply it to the different areas. So I can mix and match recording depending on what my actual scheduling is like, what I want it to be, right? Um, and then when I'm done with that, I just press apply and the camera's gonna start recording. Um, and so right now it's actually recording in the background. One thing to pay, a couple things to pay attention to when you set the recording schedule, you wanna ch uh, check your frame rate and your, and your quality. Frame rate is the number of frames captured each section, right? In reality, a human, I can't really tell the difference between 15 and 25 frames per second. I mean, people who've been in the industry long, t long enough time, you see the difference, right? Um, but for most people, 15 frames per second is plenty especially when you're talking about paying a lot of money for your hard drives. Um, but let's say your request customer's requirement is full frame rate, 25 frames per second. You can set it to that as long as the camera supports it. Um, our, our counter here will update to whatever the camera actually does support. Um, so if we, if we try and go higher, for example, I think this camera supports all the way up to 30 frames per second. Yep, so it's 30 frames per second, right? All right, the other thing we can do is we can uh, change the recording quality. The recording quality on a camera uh, really impacts the um, bit rate of that camera. Um, the higher the quality, the higher the bit rate, the higher the impact on the network, and the higher the, 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 the amount of storage you're gonna have to have for that camera, right? So right now under medium, since I've got recording applied already, if I click on my information icon on a camera, then I can see it's recording at 1080p, uh, it's recording at 30 frames per second because uh, and, and, sorry, not because, and it's and it's pulling in about three megabits per second, right? Um, if I want to change that, so if I want to change these from motion plus low res, always just a straight motion, right? Let's just do motion across the board, actually. So motion only recording, right? And I and I and I press apply, um, and then I go to quality here, and I say actually I want to do motion only, but I want to do high quality. So let's go apply that to the whole the whole thing, the whole schedule again. So now I've applied to the whole schedule, right? Press apply. What you're going to see here is the bit rate. Well, we should go up for this camera, right? Let's see. Actually, it's going low res plus high res. So the high res one there jumped up to about four megabits per second, right? If you really want to see it, you can you can crank the the frame rate all the way up to thirty, apply it to the whole thing, and then bump it up to best, and then click across here and press apply, and you'll see this camera jump. It's going to go up to thirty frames per second, and it's probably going to go up closer to, to to four or five megs. Yeah, there you go, five six megs per second, right? So 
whatever you select here is going to impact your network. It's going to impact your storage capabilities, just so you guys know. But this is how you set up a camera, right? Um, one more one more thing before I go um, is the um, how do you set up the motion on a camera? Uh, motion on a camera comes default at five. So if you enable motion on a camera, it's going to apply to the whole field of view and it's going to be a sensitivity of five, which is half of what its maximum sensitivity is, right? Um, in this case, I don't need the, rec I know there's a BTZ camera and it's pointed at my door right now. Why don't we make it even more pointed at the door? So I'll move it over exactly at the door here. Maybe move it down a little bit. Now you can see as I did that, there was some motion happening in the frame here, right? I don't want to record the entire frame. I really only want to know if someone's coming in my office because they want to shoot me or stab me in the back because, I don't know, I said something mean or who knows. Maybe they're just out to get me and stop my demo videos being made. So I go and I select the window and I select the door here and I say five sensitivity, right? And press apply. Um, now every time there's motion in those two areas, um, my, my software is going to start recording, right? And, and, and that's about, that's how you configure motion right there. It's just that simple. You can do as many motion zones as you want on a camera. Um, so if you have a, a very high megapixel camera and you just want to check certain areas or you have a, a view of a side street, but some of it's not important, you can, you can go in and you can set it up exactly how you want. Uh, when you're done, just press OK. And now this camera's been set up. And that's how you set up a camera and start camera configurations. Um, one other thing to show you right before you go is uh, what you do with an unauthorized camera. Um, unauthorized cameras will show up in the system tree here as a, a little lock on top of a camera. And when you pull them out onto the uh, viewing grid here, you can see that they're unauthorized, right? So uh, in order to authorize it, you need to know that authentication information for a camera. Good thing is if you use a lot of the same brand on a project or you use a lot of the same brand at home, but they're on Viv Profile S, maybe they're cheap, they're from China, you got them on Alibaba, who knows, right? Um, instead of having to apply each uh, login information individually, I can highlight all three cameras, right? Because I know they're the same brand. I go to camera settings and under login, I can input the login information, uh, which in this case is one, two, three, four, five, six, our favorite um, idiot's luggage lock. Uh, password um, and then press apply it'll take a few seconds because you remember we're checking in with the camera web server and when we check in with the camera web server it takes a little while because cameras uh, IP cameras are notoriously slow uh, on the web browser side so give it a few seconds here and it should start to come in when it starts to come in you'll see it go to loading there you go instead of unauthorized and then here we are Right? All my cameras are now up and running and active. And for the next step, I'll show you guys a little bit about um, how to set up a fisheye camera. But that's how you get your cameras configured and set up and, and, and uh, so you can start viewing and using them.